Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start Tutorial. I'm Laura from the TheBusyBeePost.com and in this tutorial we will be importing customers into GNU Cash. The same method is used to import vendors. I will also walk you through an issue I encountered while trying to import a customer list and the workaround I used to get the desired results. If you like my tutorials and you find them helpful Please subscribe. Let's begin. The ability to import customers or vendors into GNU Cash is especially useful if you have a large list of customers or vendors you need to enter into the system. Now, not only can you use GNU Cash to enter new customers or vendors in bulk, but you can also update pre existing customers or vendors you previously entered in the system using a CSV import file. If you don't already have a customer or vendor list, you can easily create one using any spreadsheet program such as Excel or you can use a free program such as LibreOffice Calc or Google Spreadsheet. Now one of the most important things to keep in mind is that you must create the customer or vendor list according to GNU Cache predefined format. It does not matter if you are using a list that has already been created, you will have to follow GNU Cache predefined format unless you know how to use a different method. Let's begin. Here we have a spreadsheet. In the first row, enter the customer or vendor ID number your company uses to identify your customers. Now, if you wanted to update a customer or vendor you previously entered in the system, you must enter the customer or vendor ID number exactly as it's listed in the system for the pre-existing customer or vendor to be updated. For instance, if the GNU Cash ID number for the customer you are trying to update is 00010, then entering the number 10 would be incorrect and would be considered a different customer number. Now another thing I want to point out about the ID number is if you want to or already are using the GNU Cash counter system that automatically applies the number to the next new customer or vendor entered in the system then leave the ID field empty and GNU Cash will automatically generate the customer or vendor number for each new entry for you in numerical order. Next you have the company name. Then you have an additional name field you can use to enter a contact name. Address 1 here you can enter the street address. Address 2 enter the company city location. Address 3 enter the state the company is located in. Address 4 enter the zip code. And you can also enter a phone number, a fax number, email address, and you have a notes field you can use to enter notes you would like to enter about this customer. The next fields apply to the customer's shipping address. This is not relevant for vendors. Entering a shipping address is useful if the customer's shipping address is different from the company's address you entered for the customer. You can enter the alternate address here in the ship name field and follow the same format you did for the original customer's information. The ship address 1 enter the street address. Ship address 2 the city. Ship address 3 the state. Ship address 4 the zip code. And you have a place to enter the ship 2's phone number, fax, and email. Once you are finished entering your data and you are satisfied with your entries, it is a good idea to make a backup copy of your list because in this next step, which is very important, it can make or break your import session. You have to remove, I will say it again, you have to remove the header rows by deleting the top rows and then save the file as a text CSV file. Otherwise, the import will not work. Now, you may be thinking, what if I don't have all the data on the customer to enter? 
Well, according to the GNU Cache documentation, all the fields are optional except the company name and at least one of the four address lines of the billing address must be filled in. But when I tried entering the minimum data required, I ran into a little issue. And in this tutorial, I will show you the difference when I filled in the majority of the data fields and when I only entered the minimum required data and the workaround I used to get the desired results I was looking for. Let's begin. In this first example, I have a copy of a completed list of customers I will import into GNU Cache. I've removed all the top row headers as required and I filled in all the data fields except the note field and the facts field which I left blank. To import the customer or vendor data file, select file from the menu bar, then import, and then import customers and vendors to open the new import dialog box. Choose the file to import from your computer by clicking on the open tab on the left hand side, select where on your computer the file is located. I will select documents since my file is located in my documents folder. I will navigate to the file and click on it to select it. Next, scroll down and make sure the file type you are importing is selected. Here it says CSV, which is the type of file I am importing. If everything checks out, click on Import. This will take you back to the dialog box where you should be able to see the file you selected here alongside choose the file to import. Next, select the import type, either customer or vendor. Customer is already selected by default. And since I am importing a customer list, that works for me. Next, select the import options. Since I saved my file as a text CSV file, which is a comma separated values file, I will select comma separated. If you are using a different type, you can select it here. If everything has been done correctly, a preview of the data will appear in the window below, as you see here. If you do not see a preview of your list, that means GNU Cache was not able to match your import data rows to the selected CSV format and therefore you will not be able to import the file. If everything is successful, you can verify if your data is listed in the correct columns here by using the scroll bar on the bottom to scroll across the screen. If you are satisfied with the results, click on the OK button to start the import. A successful import will display a report that tells you how many rows were imported and that none was ignored. Now, if I go to business, then customer overview, I can see the new customers and if I click on it, I can see the customer data has been entered very nicely, I must say. In this next example, I decided to create a customer list with custom ID numbers and the customer's name and address and nothing else. Here, I've already uploaded the list. Next, I will select the list type. And as you can see here, there is no preview. And if I click on the OK tab, I get an error message that says the four lines were ignored. Now, supposedly, all the fields I left blank were optional. Now, what I'm thinking is maybe the system was expecting data in a certain amount of columns. So I decide to put a zero in the ship mail column, which is the last column data is expected in. Now let's look at the results. Here I've already uploaded the new list with the zero in the last column. 
Next, I will select the list type. And as you can see here, it is the same list, but this time it shows up in the preview, meaning it's a good list. And if I scroll across the columns, you can see the zero I entered in the last column. And when I select OK, the import report indicates it was successful and no lines were ignored. And if I select Business Customer Overview, I see the customers I imported with the custom ID numbers starting at 250. So I did all that to show you that sometimes you might have to tweak things to get the results you're looking for. But the main thing is to follow the pre-designed format for entering the data.